In this video, we're going to consider having a capacitor uh, of 3 farads. It's been charged up to a total of 10 volts, and we're going to let it discharge across the circuit. When it does so, we want to know what will be the voltage drop across points A and B. So we know that when we, in the last video, we uh, derived a formula for the voltage of a discharging uh, capacitor. But for the moment, let's just say that the voltage drop here, right now we'll just call that VC. And let's look how this circuit is set up. Here is 9 ohms, and then we have these other resistors. But here we see that the 4 and the 8 there in series is, are the 3 and the 1. So I think the first step is can we determine what is the voltage drop across here, which of course would be the same as here since they're in parallel, but what is this voltage drop in relation to this? And if we could figure out what REQ is, which looks like we could do without too much problem, then we should be able to get this entire voltage drop because once we know REQ, once we determine that, then we can redraw the circuit like this. We would have a capacitor, the 9 ohm resistor, this would be REQ, this is 9 ohms, and this we're just saying for the moment is VC. But we can get an expression for the voltage drop across here, because here we just have this in series with this one. So that would be real easy to do. Then once we know the voltage drop across here, that would be the same as the voltage drop across here and here, because this resistor is the equivalence of these. So let's get this. Here we have 12 in parallel with 4. So it looks like this will be 12 times 4 divided by 12 plus 4, which is 16. And this goes into here 4 times. So that equals 3 ohms. So here we can put in 3 ohms. And now for this circuit we have, what is the voltage drop across 3 ohms? Well, it's just going to be that value, 3, divided by all the resistors in series with it. 9 plus 3 is 12 times, of course, this voltage drop, Vc, or that is 1 fourth Vc. So the voltage drop across here is 1 fourth Vc. Of course, that will be 3 fourths Vc. Together they add up to give, to give us this. But this is 1 fourth Vc. Well, this 3 ohm resistor, that's the equivalent of this arrangement of resistors. And we said the voltage drop across the 3 ohm resistor is Vc over 4. So that tells us that the voltage drop across here is Vc divided by 4. So here, this is Vc divided by 4, and of course here it is too. It's all part of the equivalent resistance, and of course these are in parallel. So the voltage drop all the way across here is Vc divided by 4. So now it looks like considering the series arrangement of these two resistors, we should be able to determine 
the voltage drop across here in relation to this. And that will give us a voltage value right here. And we should be able to do the same thing right here, determine the voltage drop across this resistor in relation to this, and get a voltage value right here, then subtract the two to get the voltage across here. And we'll have that part of the problem done. So let's work on that. The voltage across the 8 ohm resistor, E8, that will equal the value of that resistor 8 divided by all the other resistors in series with it. 4 plus 8 is 12 times the entire voltage drop. That's VC over 4. So we have this is equal to 8 over 48. Looks like that should be 1 6 times VC. So we know what this voltage right here is. That is VC divided by 6. Where the tire voltage is VC divided by 4 for both resistors. So we have an expression for the voltage here. I won't put the ohms inside. It's going to get too messy. Now what about the voltage here? So now we want to know the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor. So V1 will equal its value 1 divided by the value of all the resistors in series with it. 1 plus 3 is 4. So it's 1 fourth times the entire voltage drop. That's VC over 4. Or it looks like that will equal 1 16th VC. So this right here is VC divided by 16. Of course, these are ohms. Or not ohms, but volts. Okay, we're dealing with voltages. Okay, so now we want to know the voltage difference across this gap right here. So it looks like all we have to do is just take the difference between them, and that will give us the voltage gap in terms of just VC. So it's going to be 1 sixth minus 1 16th. Volts, not ohms. And I think that comes out to something like 5 over 48 times VC. It's this times VC. Volts. So the voltage across here at any time is 5 over 48 times this voltage over here. Now let's look at this again. Here we have capacitor. It was charged up to 10 volts. And the, um, it has a capacitance of 3 farads. Now we derived in the last video the expression of voltage for a discharging capacitor it is its initial voltage times E to the minus T divided by RC. And in this case, the initial voltage is 10 volts. That is what this was charged up to. So we can put 10 in here. And 
that was three farads. Now the resistance, that is the entire resistance of the circuit that is discharging into. So there is nine ohms here and then this arrangement of resistors is three ohms. So it's nine plus three is 12 ohms, the resistance of the entire circuit. So here this is C, three farads, times 12 ohms, that's 36. So V, and if we follow these units out, which we haven't done yet, it actually comes out to a time unit, uh, could be 36 seconds. We have V equals 10 times E to the minus T divided by 36. And here we said the voltage across AB was 5 over 48 times VC. So VAB equals 5 over 48 times 10 times E to the minus T divided by 36. And here we have 50 over 48, or it looks like that would be the same as 25 divided by 24. So VAB equals 25 over 24 times E to the minus T divided by 36. So there's our final voltage expression for the voltage drop across these two points in the circuit as our capacitor discharges. So I think that answers it for this video. And I think this is something like video number 66. Anyway, the playlist is at the website digital-university.org.